So this video is going to be about DNA proofreading and the telomeres. So proofreading is going to be carried out by DNA polymerase. So if you remember, DNA polymerase is going to be the molecule or the protein rather that's uh, responsible for incorporating new nucleotides into this growing DNA molecule. And so when we have polymerase adding these nucleotides, there's a mismatch rate or an error rate of only about one out of every 100,000 nucleotides that's added. So that's already a really low error rate, but when we add proofreading on top of that, the error rate drops even further to only one out of every 10 billion nucleotides being incorrectly paired. So one way that we can uh, kind of fix a mismatch is by mismatch repair. So in mismatch repair, the DNA polymerase is going to recognize that it's incorrectly paired two nucleotides and then remove the wrong one and replace it with the correct one. So for example, right here, we have adenine paired with the cytosine. So we know that's not correct and so does the polymerase. So the polymerase will remove the cytosine and replace it with a thymine and now we have the correct base pair. So another way that we can repair DNA damage is with nucleotide excision repair. So uh, with nucleotide excision repair, so we're gonna have some sort of damage in the DNA molecule that's gonna result in that DNA molecule having an uh, altered structure. And so the cell is gonna recognize this incorrect structure of this DNA molecule, and it's gonna call in a nuclease, which is gonna be an enzyme that's going to cut on either side of this damaged portion and take that damaged portion out. And so it'll go to the part that's causing any issues and then remove it by cutting on either side. So now we have this gap that's gonna be filled in by DNA polymerase. And so you might be wondering why we don't need an RNA primer to fill in this gap. So the reason we don't need that RNA primer is because we already have this pre-existing uh, DNA molecule right here that the polymerase is capable of just adding new nucleotides onto. So polymerase isn't capable of just generating a new strand of DNA um, out of nothing. It has to have some sort of pre-existing nucleotide strand that it can just add new nucleotides to the end to, which is why we need the RNA primer in replication, but we don't need it here because we already have this piece. So lastly, we're going to have this gap in the sugar phosphate backbone being sealed up by DNA ligase, just like we saw with the joining of Okazaki fragments in DNA replication. Same sort of thing is going to happen in nucleotide excision repair. So lastly, we're going to look at uh, telomerase and the telomeres. So a telomere is going to be the sequence at the very end of the chromosome that has repeated nucleotides and doesn't contain any genes. So that's going to be this overhang right here. So when we're replicating things and we get to the ends of the chromosomes, we have a bit of a problem because um, we don't have the uh, DNA base really that we need to synthesize this uh, in an easier way. And so what we have is telomerase come in. So telomerase is gonna be this enzyme that attaches to the three prime end of the telomere and prevents chromosome shortening. So it has this RNA sequence that's capable of recognizing the end of this three prime overhang and then allowing polymerase to um, add new nucleotides on using this RNA and the telomerase as a template. And so once we do that, then we can um, add new nucleotides to this, to this end and kind of get it caught up, but we have this overhang still, which is why it necessitates this telomerase instead of just regular DNA polymerase in that regular replication process. The ends are a little more complicated because of this overhang. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.